After years of camping in small vehicles, I've slowly curated a kitchen collection of items that are not only compact, but are also optimized for minimal energy consumption. Picture this, you're gearing up for your next overland adventure surrounded by the rugged beauty of the wilderness. As you survey the limited space in your vehicle, you wonder, how can I pack efficiently and still have the space I need to cook a tasty meal at my destination? Welcome back. When it comes to overland camping in my Jeep, I know firsthand the challenges of managing limited space and the importance of energy efficiency, especially in the camp kitchen. And today I'm excited to share my top overland camping kitchen essentials with you all, carefully selected to tackle the storage and energy efficiency challenges of outdoor cooking. So whether you are a seasoned adventurer or just getting started, you're probably always on the lookout for things to perfect your camping kitchen setup. Before I get too deep into the appliances in my overland camping build, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the central power of this unit. I currently have the Blue Eddy AC240 and B210. And between those two devices, I have almost 3,700 watt hours or the equivalent of about three 100 amp hour batteries from your traditional 12 volt deep cycle batteries. And that thing will give me 2,400 watts of AC power. And it also runs my mini fridge for about a week. And on top of running the mini fridge, I can make two to three cups of coffee a day in that week period. In my previous build, I had a minivan camper and on that minivan camper, I had a 200 watt solar panel, which essentially kept this setup topped off at all times. But I only had about 2000 watt hours. And so if I went for more than about two or three days without direct sunlight, the solar panel wouldn't be able to keep up with the demands of the power. But now with the 3700 watt hour, battery capacity. I've extended my range to about a week and I can manage that by plugging in wall power and recharging this just about once a week. However, I would love to get one of those flat rooftop tents and then add a solar panel on top of that and that would perfect my setup. If you love the idea of overland camping or just camping in general, please consider subscribing. While I'm talking about the power station, let me show you something. So the only reason that it is possible for me to have this power station in the bed of my truck is that it is water resistant and dust proof. This power station has sat in the bed of this truck for about a month now, and it's been exposed to essentially tornado weather conditions. So pretty intense rain, and it has never once stopped working. So I look forward to seeing how that power system holds up to the rugged conditions of dirt roads and rain through the summer in the bed of my truck. Now that I've kind of described how I power everything in the kitchen, I wanted to talk a little bit about my refrigerator. So this is the Iceco VL60 refrigerator. It sits in the bed of my truck. It is also exposed to all of those weather conditions. And inside of it, it has a dual zone climate control. So there's essentially a divider down the middle. And I keep both of these currently on refrigerator mode. When I was talking about how long the power station lasts, that's because I'm not freezing anything. If I did decide to keep one in freezer mode and one in refrigerator mode, I feel like I would add probably about another 50 to 75% of power consumption, further reducing my range when it comes to being off grid in this vehicle. So I've got the fridge on the slide and on top of the fridge, I've installed a small four foot by two foot table. And I would say this table is definitely something that's essential for my camp kitchen setup. So something that was very important to me while building the Overland Camper was making sure that I could have a table like this in the bed of my truck. And to make that happen, I've got this lifetime two by four table, and then I bought some brackets from Amazon. I'll post these in the video description if you wanna check them out. But these four brackets are essentially all that holds the table in place while I'm going down the road. Now I do have a bungee cord that 
looks like it keeps the table in place but honestly those brackets the way i have them bent and folded they actually do all of the support work for the table and let me show you this so i've done such a good job of setting up those brackets that it does slightly damage the table and i feel like eventually i will wear out a line all the way across the front of the table from the brackets but i'm super happy with the way the brackets came out so I've talked about how I keep my electronic appliances powered up on my camping trips, but I also always keep a can of this Isopro or Isobutane. And with that, I have two camp stoves that are both run off of this type of can. And this one's new, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the purpose of this stove was, and I think I finally got it figured out. So this one's so new, I haven't even really used it yet, but I love the design of it. And I'll explain why in a second. Because I have used this fire maple stove since about 2019. This thing has been my go-to for boiling water, in particular for when I use my mocha to cook coffee. And I've had one concern with this stove that I don't have with this stove. So this is the problem with this fire maple stove. It's not really a problem, but it's for me kind of a safety concern. And that is when I'm making coffee with this small fire maple stove, it sits on top of the canister like this. So that's really high and in my perspective, it's also unstable. So I worry about knocking it over while it's cooking. But now that I have this new stove and this is called the Titanium Saturn stove, it has this nice long hose that hooks up to the top of the canister. And then when you fold it out completely, this thing is super stable. And so that's the base completely folded out. And if I want to set my mocha on it, it just simply sets right there. And so the risk of knocking it over is way lower than it is on this other camp stove. Now, don't get me wrong. This camp stove set up like this with this on top is perfect for cooking or boiling a quart of water, throwing something like some rice or some oats in there and getting whatever you need cooked so that you can have a quick meal. This is kind of a knockoff of some other brands that I've seen out there, but I've had it for about five years and I haven't had any problems with it. So I'm super excited to add this titanium stove to my camp kitchen setup. And a few minutes ago while I was talking about the stove, I said, hey, I'm not sure exactly what this stove is for. And it's perfect for small vehicle camping where you have limited space for storage because this is a perfect stove it's not super big it also folds down compactly when you're not using it for me this is going to be a long-term keeper in my camp kitchen setup hooking this thing up is pretty easy you just take your isobutane canister and twist it on just like you do on any other stove and i should not have had that upside down but that's ready Now that it's hooked up, I'm just gonna turn my nozzle a little bit. Boom, and I can feel that heat from here. Quite a bit of heat. This dial is very tight. It doesn't have any play in it. Very easy to control. Much easier to control than the dial on this stove right here. So I'm gonna shut that off because I can actually feel that heat blowing right on me. I think the wind is blowing this way a little bit not something i want to deal with right now this stove is designed to pull a maximum of about 338 grams of fuel per hour and so this canister is 660 grams so you can get about two hours of solid runtime on max with this stove these canisters tend to last me up to a month because i usually only cook things for three to five minutes at a time giving me quite a bit of time with the canister but this one is probably nearing the end of its life when you're done with it, it fits nicely back in this canister. So check the link in the video description to find out the current price of it. This one is also going to be essentially a permanent addition to my camp kitchen because I've had it so long that I just trust it the way it works. Of course, you can never start a day camping without coffee. I know some people say they don't use coffee, but coffee for me is basically an essential part of starting my day. And so I have this Keurig K-Cup coffee maker and give me a sec to turn on the AC outlet on the Blue Eddy here. So this coffee maker takes the same amount of time that it would take at a home to boil water, which is basically two to five minutes. The best part about this Keurig coffee maker is it basically holds just the amount of water that I put in it. So when I'm done using it, I can unplug it, 
put it away and I don't have water sloshing all over the deck drawer system on the inside. My final major kitchen appliance that I love to carry with me for overland camping is this induction hot plate. I use my cast iron skillet on top of it. And with these two items, I can cook pretty much anything. There are a couple of items that I didn't mention today. One of them is my little seven egg egg cooker that thing is perfect for boiling a few eggs and just having them ready to eat love eating eggs and they're a very nutritious part of my diet on top of that i do have the cheap blue coleman single burner butane stove and that stove was probably 20 or 30 bucks on amazon a few years ago and if you want to see me using that in a camping video check out this video and i'll see you guys on my next adventure